Hey everybody, Steph here with KillerSites.com and Studio Web. If you've been watching my videos, you know that I really lean on my martial arts background a lot when it comes to my coding decisions, my business decisions, entrepreneurial activities, if you will, everything. What you'll see in life is that if you take any skill set, whether it be martial arts, business, uh, coding, development, etc. You take any skill set and you work it for 5, 10, 15 years or longer, the lessons that you learn from whatever skills that you're practicing will transfer on to all fields of study. And I discovered that in a big way f with uh, martial arts, where I had been doing martial arts for quite a bit when I started to code. So I started coding in 1994, 95, started building websites. And uh, at that point, I had been doing martial arts, oof, I don't know, I guess 15 years or so. And a lot of the advanced concepts that I picked up in martial arts, I would just rely on those when I made my coding decisions. So let me give you some simple examples, like, like being very simple in terms of your code, being very efficient with your code, trying to have less code to get the job done. I got this directly from martial arts, specifically, personally me, and it's not exclusive to it, but I got this from Jeet Kune Do, Bruce Lee stuff. And one of the basic principles of Bruce Lee's art was to uh, absorb what is useful from different styles of fighting, uh, to take what you like, reject what you don't like, and then to simplify everything that you do. Think about coding. Coding is exactly the same way. You should learn different languages, different structures, different uh, frameworks, different libraries. I'm not saying you have to learn everything, but you should learn a few different things. And then you're going to take what's good for you, what works for your particular type of work that you want to do and your personality type, and then you just reject the rest. And then when you write your code, you try to make your code as minimal and as simple as possible. You don't want fancy, super complex algorithms if you can afford not to have that. The more complex you make your code, the harder you make it to maintain. And that's one of the things you have to realize that as a developer, you're going to have to maintain code. Another principle I learned from martial arts was from uh, was the basic rule that it's good to mix and match styles so you can compare and contrast different techniques, different philosophies, different training methods. The same thing with coding. I personally found that with each new language that I learned, my ability to code in all languages increased. So my first programming language, I believe, was JavaScript in 96. Not sure, but I think that was it. I may have done a bit of probe before, but it's been such a long time. Mm. But the first one I got into was JavaScript, then I got into VBScript, and I got into... Uh, ASP Classic and yada yada Java, yada 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 yada, and so on. So, with every new language that I learned, my overall understanding of programming increased quite a bit because I was able to see how different languages approach the same concepts, how JavaScript, for instance, handled functions and data types and data type overloading versus Java, for instance. Java and JavaScript, two different languages. They have similar names because of marketing purposes back in the 90s, but that's about it. JavaScript is a scripting language that is loosely typed. Java is not really a scripting, well, it's not a scripting language. It's a full-fledged programming language that, uh, that are strongly typed. And there's a whole bunch of other differences as well. Anyway, here to just point out that it makes sense to learn JavaScript and maybe to learn Java or some other programming language and that with each successive language that you learn, your overall understanding of programming will just get better because you will be able to compare and contrast different languages and their approaches. The same thing with frameworks. You have several JavaScript frameworks out there, some compete, and it'd be interesting, some overlap, and it would be interesting to compare and contrast frameworks to see how different people approach different things. That's how I came to develop my own MVC server-side framework in Java 
by looking at a whole bunch of Java frameworks at the time. And I decided at that time that I wanted my simple, lightweight, my own implementation. I'm not saying it was the greatest framework. It wasn't, but for the type of work and the type of contract work I was doing at the time, it worked really, really well for me. And the frameworks that were around at the time, I just didn't like. I thought they were too complex. And I'll leave with this. Today, I would never consider rolling out my own framework. There are so many frameworks out there. The uh, landscape, if you will, of frameworks, whether it be server-side frameworks or client-side frameworks, they're all very mature, and there is no sense to reinvent the wheel now. So in Python, you got Django, and you got others. You got Ruby on Rails, and you got Laravel on PHP, you got Spring on Java, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There is no reason to create your own server-side framework, I, practically no reason. So I would not even approach that, just in case you're thinking about that. You remember, when I was talking about that, when I said I rolled out my own MDC framework, that is because this was in the 90s. This is a very different time from now. You're lucky now. The frameworks are far more mature. You can get much more done with so much less code and complexity. And uh, there you go.